Hello everybody, this is Tyler here once again from the Character Workshop, wishing that I had myself a can of Coke while filming this episode. So, I was planning on talking about this um, earlier in the season, but now I am finally going to be talking about what I would personally consider one of the more influential Flash animations of the internet. And I am of course talking about Ed's World. So, as you all may know, Ed's World is a British adult animated comedy web series uh, that consists of a variety of different um, mediums. Uh, one of the most notable examples are the Flash animations, which have been uploaded most notably on Newgrounds and YouTube. And then there have also been comics based on the series that have been uploaded on websites such as DeviantArt and Tumblr. And uh, browser games, which is mostly uploaded on, well, Newgrounds and Ed's World's own website. But in this video, uh, most of the things I'm going to be talking about relate to the web series. But without further ado, let's get right to it. So the series first premiered online sometime between either 2003 or 2004, created by a guy by the name of Ed Gold, who, at the time that this series was made, he was probably either 15 or 16. So, Ed's World got its, you know, first run through on Newgrounds, and then eventually, um, around 2006, episodes of the series started to be uploaded onto YouTube, so... And eventually, as the years go by, the series would become more and more popular, and it would eventually become popular to the point where um, the organizers of the 2009 United Nations Climate Change Conference requested them to make an episode about climate change that was used in the opening ceremony of the conference, so... Ed's World was, um, was quite big during its time, and of course, many years afterwards. Now, the main characters of Ed's World are all loosely based on the people that they're voiced by. Like, uh, the first main character, for an example, Ed, obviously, being based on and voiced by the creator of the show, Ed Gold, who wears a green parka and is well known for having an interest in coke. And then we have Tom, who is loosely based on and voiced by Thomas Ridgewell. And one of the most noticeable things about Tom is the fact that he has no eyeballs. Like, he just has big old black eyes. And the characters have made, you know, several references to this. Um, the comics have also made references to this. And apparently, according to one of the episodes, uh, Tom's parents were a pineapple and a bowling ball, which I guess the pineapple is where he got his spiky hair and the uh, bowling ball is where he got his big eyes. Maybe that's why he doesn't have eyes. I don't know. They don't, they don't explicitly say that that's the reason, but it could be a possibility. And he's also well known as being arguably the comic relief of the show. A lot of the jokes from the show often come from him. Um, and he also, just like how Ed has an interest in coke, uh, Tom has quite an interest in Smirnoff and music instruments. And then we get to Matt, who is loosely based on and voiced by Matt Hargreaves. Hargreaves. I wonder if he's related to uh, Roger and Adam Hargreaves, the people behind the Mr. Men and Little Misses. Uh, probably not. But anyways, uh, in terms of Matt, he's basically the self-centered character. Uh, a lot of his jokes often come from him admiring himself. In fact, one r running gag throughout the entire series is whenever an object's about to be thrown at the characters, uh, Matt would normally scream, NOT MY FACE! And in terms of appearance, he has um, spiky blonde hair and wears a green coat with a purple hoodie underneath it. And then we get to the fourth main character of the show, Tord, who is loosely based on and voiced by Tord Larson. And he basically has light brown spiky hair and wears a red parka, and is also well known for having a huge interest in causing violence just for the fun of it. And Tord is an interesting one because 
He was one of the main characters of the show for a while, up until around 2008, where the voice actor of the character decided to leave the show. And because of that, uh, Toward the character moved away from the show, and throughout the rest of the series, the adventures would focus mostly on Ed, Tom, and Matt. And also another thing I forgot to mention about all the characters on the show, you know, both main and supporting and minor, is that they don't have noses. That has also never been properly explained in the series, even though there was a comic that I remember um, reading a long time ago where Tom asked Ed, Hey, how come you don't draw your characters with noses? And then Ed had like some sort of a dramatic flashback of like, I don't know, him getting sucked up by a nose, I don't know. So the series had a variety of different adventures that the characters went on in very comedic ways. Like, uh, a lot of the Halloween specials of the show had the characters um, facing off against zombies. One of them had Matt turning into a vampire. The other one had the four main characters running away from a serial killer. The list goes on. And then the show also had a variety of Christmas specials. Uh, one of the most noticeable ones being the, uh, the Santa Claus trilogy, where a zombie Santa Claus by the name of Santa Claus, <laughs> get it, cause like the S in Santa is a Z instead, and zombie starts with Z, ha ha ha. Anyways, but that whole trilogy focused on them trying to stop Santa Claus from ruining Christmas, and also, um, interestingly enough, uh, when the first Santa Claus installment came out, this was like back when like um, the main characters were just Ed, Matt, Tom, and Tord. But then in the second installment, Santa Claus 2, uh, this was like, you know, after Tord left the series. Uh, there was a joke in there where uh, Santa Claus finally meets the main characters, and while he was talking, he was like, Hey, wait a minute. Weren't there four of you last time? And then Ed was like, Oh yeah, Tord left. And then Santa Claus was like, "Oh, but he was my favorite. Other noticeable adventures of Ed's world um, include them discovering a tomb that was like underneath their house. Them also dealing with some clones made by a movie producer. Um, and the plot of this one was the four main characters went to see a movie and they were the only characters that went to see the movies. The director decided to make clones of all four of them so that his movies would become more popular. And yeah, that definitely led to some problems with the main characters. Other adventures include moving targets where the characters had to join the army, 25 feet under the seats, which is an obvious parody of 20,000 leagues under the sea, where Ed, Tom, and Max basically discovered an underwater kingdom underneath their seats. WT Future, where Ed, Tom, and Matt beat a future version of Ed. The show was a huge success for Ed Gold, and around the time when the series was um, at its height, uh, his channel had the most subscribers out of anybody in the comedy category in the UK, and was also the fourth most viewed uh, comedian in the UK. And I already mentioned earlier in the review about the uh, 2009 United Nations thing, so yeah, Ed's World was quite a huge success. However, unfortunately, around March 25th, 2012, Ed Gold unfortunately passed away due to leukemia. So in his will, Thomas Ridgewell, the voice of Tom, took over the series between 2012 to 2016, uh, being the main writer and director for the rest of the episodes, with the animation being provided by another friend of theirs, Paul Turbood. The show ended around March 2016 with the finale, The End, where the plot of this is toward decides to come back to the group, which leaves Tom a little bit suspicious about his return, and then eventually finds out that um, Tord's main goal was to get access to his um, giant robot and try to take over the world, essentially revealing to be a bad guy. 
However, his plans were eventually um, foiled by Tom, and yeah, then we get a uh, a pretty good ending with um, Ed, Tom, and Matt, who the main joke of the ending was that um, it seemed like the characters now lived separately. However, it was revealed to like they just live in separate rooms in apartments and within the same apartment, and they just all visited one another and just watched TV together, so... Yeah, that was, um, that was pretty much the finale for Ed's World. And in this two-part finale, uh, Tord, instead of being voiced by Tord Larson, was voiced by Jamie Spicer Lewis instead. And... Yeah, that was pretty much the last that we've seen of Ed's World when it comes to the web series. Uh, Tom later announced the day after the episode premiered that, um, he was given the rights to Ed's World back to Ed Gold's family. And on topic of the finale, I did remember seeing a video a little while ago by, um, a YouTuber, I forgot his name, but he was talking about the finale and how he thought it was honestly kind of a disappointment that, like, uh, for example, he would have uh, liked to see Tord have some sort of um, redemption arc, um, get it, gain his trust back from the rest of the main characters, and then we would have had like all four of the main characters at the very end, which, um, by that reason alone, I think it would have made the finale a little bit better, but um, unfortunately nothing we can really do about it now, and... He also said this might be in the finale to Ed's world, it doesn't really focus that much on Ed, it kind of focuses more on Tom, so that was kind of another uh, thing that was um, what he thought was wrong with the finale, but I didn't think the finale was that bad. I mean, yeah, I do agree, you know, with his statement about, like, you know, Tord should have gone back to being, like, a, a good guy at the very end, but... Eh, nothing we can really do about it now. I honestly do wish I had more to say about this show than I already did in this video, but... I mean, it was only a web series, so unfortunately there wasn't too much information about the show, so... I can only, you know, talk about so much with it. But, in terms of, like, my opinion on the show, I it, it's really enjoyable. Um, definitely, um... Some pretty nice humor, and while like some of the jokes in the show aren't, um, I would say really, um, you know, that's funny nowadays. Um, there are still some good ones here and there, but yeah, like some of the jokes haven't like you know 100% aged well. But to be honest, it's um, watching older episodes of Ed's World is a little bit, um, I would say, more watchable than let's say uh, the newer episodes of Astef Movie, which um, I will get into later on. But yeah, Ed's World, pretty fun series, um, and I think that's really all I gotta say about it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Vacay from England. If you guys did, feel free to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more episodes of Vacay from England, and just mediocre plush content in general. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think. That is about it. This is Tyler from the Character Workshop, signing out. Next time, I'm gonna be talking about a spin-off of Doctor Who. Or at least it was going to be a spinoff of Doctor Who, and it was going to star probably one of the most well-known robotic dogs of all time. Ed! Usually the leader, probably the first of them all to poke fun. He's the artist, he loves cola, and he's always trying to make a pun. Probably due to his linguistic... Ed... Ucation? That's terrible.